Thank you. For the last 10 years, our team, Resilient Organisations, part of the team has been tracking past disasters. We've been looking at um, recovery over different types of disasters, disasters around the world. And we're now beginning to relate that to how um, Christchurch is recovering. So I put together a phase slide about things that are happening in disasters and gave it to the Resilient Organisations Group recently and they were quite pleased with it. So I'm going to run this presentation about what I see has happened in different disasters. So we've looked over um, at uh, New Orleans, we've looked at uh, Bandarache, we've looked at the um, China earthquake and I've, I've been tracking the bushfire recovery. So for the last four and a half, coming up five years, um, we've made trips every year looking at, for one or two weeks, teams of us looking at basically what hap what's been happening. So I'm going to really draw on the bushfire stuff because that's the, the area I know well because I've been running that team. But the rest of the team members have also spent considerable time overseas in different other disasters, so they'll kind of talk about those. And I'm just going to go through these phases that we see and we can kind of talk about them in the language that we hear in those recovery phases. And so I'm going to go through these five phases and show you basically what we see generally happening. It's not an um, exact picture, you know, you can't say on this date we're going to be starting to do this, but generally we see these sorts of things happening. So the first thing is really up to six months, and it will probably resonate with people in Christchurch, you know, what do we do, what do we do? It's a kind of repeated almost mantra that we heard, you know, the people running around not really sure how to deal with this complex, chaotic environment. And we start seeing some activity in the first six months, and we tend to see this in different disasters where demolition and waste disposal start becoming kind of key issues for us because we've got to clear all this, this mess away, we've got to kind of start working out what we can and can't keep. And we start thinking about, well, land use planning, you know, now we've got unsafe land. We didn't think we had unsafe land. What, what are we going to do with that, that unsafe land? So we see land use planning issues, and, and this is, resonates very much in Christchurch, but it also resonates in other disasters where suddenly we have to rethink about the land that we're building on. Usually there's quite a strong commitment to rebuild. It almost comes directly from the government. So, for instance, in Victoria, after the bushfires, the government said, we will rebuild. We went, they went into small communities and they said, we're going to rebuild. And that commitment to rebuild has consequences because in some places you may not want to be rebuilding in those areas, but, it, but because there's a strong government commitment and drive to rebuild, you see that kind of um, galvanating and also... Uh, moving forward the recovery. So then we see some establishments of frameworks, some temporary accommodation and displacement happening, but we don't really see any rebuilding going on. So the first kind of six months, we tend to see these in different disasters. After six months to a year, people start going, oh yes, it's much bigger than we thought it was. We always hear this. We seem to be seeing quite regularly it's a kind of realisation for us that actually it's bigger. It's bigger and uglier than we thought it was going to be and therefore we need to do a lot more of the planning side and a lot more thinking, hard thinking about what are we going to do with this city or what are we going to do with this region in terms of rebuilding. So what we start seeing is some rezoning some new codes and Dave obviously is seeing what happens subsequently with those new codes. We start seeing some resourcing problems. We look on the horizon, we start thinking, how are we going to actually do this? You know, what's the resourcing needs that we're going to have to put into this? We're starting to realise that it's actually a really big, complex problem we're dealing with, and we start to see some repairs. Um, but there's loads of uncertainty around the population, businesses and communities. Uh, they just don't know where they're going, they don't know how to re-establish themselves. So again, we're kind of in a phase at this stage, and it usually goes up to a year, sometimes beyond that, where we're kind of realising that we need to make decisions, but we're realising it's much bigger. And that always seems to happen in, dis in the disasters we've looked at. You still see people in temporary accommodation and insurance starts becoming a critical kind of aspect. People start realising that insurance is a big problem. And it's usually after about six months that the bugs in insurance really start becoming uh, increasingly kind of embedded in the recovery process. And then we start getting on with it, mobilisation phase. People start trying to do things. And so you might see buildings going up. So for instance here, like kind of schools and community buildings, they start going in first because people 
want to see communities being rebuilt, they want to feel connected to their communities, so you start seeing repair work and um, rebuilding done on those kind of public buildings. Um, and for some of those buildings start becoming you know, places to congregate, places for people to go. But the sense of we're getting on with it now, we're going to start getting our community back together, and it's all going to start happening from this, this point. And we start seeing continuing resourcing problems here, and so Alice's work that she talked about uh, earlier, some of Alice's work has kind of tracked resourcing over time, looking at different resources and what problems you have over different disasters over time. See quite common problems in terms of human resources, quite common problems in terms of materials um, t and technologies and skills. Resourcing problems start becoming really critical around, around this point. Um, there's less uncertainty from the population's point of view. They start seeing that things are happening. They start seeing that we're getting on with it. They start feeling a bit more connected to their region. But we've still got these ongoing uh, sales and, and insurance problems. And then we're really in this phase now in Christchurch, and I think this is quite a common phase. We realise that we're getting on with it, but then we start to struggle. And we start to kind of get weighed down by the whole sheer weight of the complexity of the problem. We want to kind of move fast, but we're realising that actually the recovery is never going to be fast. It's very hard for, for people, and it starts not going to plan. And I think we're seeing that quite, quite a lot. And it's, it's a common, very common occurrence not to go to plan. And so we have to kind of get out of the mentality of here's our plan and we're going to implement it to there's going to be things that are going to go wrong and we need to kind of work that into how we recover. Um, we see activities around houses, businesses returning but struggling. Obviously, um, Tracy's got some evidence of that. We see some cost escalations, especially around big code changes. Very common in different disaster zones to see code changes and we start seeing the escalations. And then we see materials, Alice's work around trying to get materials, people trying to struggle to get those. Homeowners trying to struggle in, but also commercial organisations struggling to get the materials and the skills that they need. And we start seeing some housing affordability problems. And this is quite common because you're getting skilled workers in large numbers coming in and you're compounding by people still in temporary accommodation. And the whole economic argument that Alice presented is kind of drawing on some of that work that we know that it becomes housing affordability problems, it becomes a, a key thing for recovery. And then we get to a new normal phase. So the disasters that we've looked at get to a new normal. They don't go back where they were. They feel like this is how it is now and there's no going back. And it's usually beyond four years we start seeing people kind of feel that there's a new normal phase. But what we see is a very different landscape to the one we had. So obviously Christchurch, you know, you've got a very, very different landscape. The way that people conduct business changes quite considerably. So obviously the stuff Tracy has been talking about, business is changing, business is the, the way um, people can conduct their business and the way, the way people live changes. There's still ongoing building, but often there's delays in that. But it's really part of the kind of new normal, the fact that we're just, you know, carrying on now. And people are accepting that there is a new normal. So people start feeling that it's different from how it was, but they can live with it. And so they, they feel that that's a, a kind of progression through the disaster. So um, final thoughts. These are just to wrap up about what we basically see in the recovery environment and the reconstruction environment. You know, if you change the codes, you slow recovery. And I think Dave's seen some of the evidence of some of the work that's come out from code changes. We always see insurance is problematic, it's always been problematic in every disaster we've looked at we've seen some insurance problems and it slows recovery and so we can kind of build this into our planning for future disasters, we can anticipate what we might see. There's definitely a need to kind of get some resource planning in place, some pre-planning before disasters. So that scenario planning that we do around the country quite often is really critical for us to kind of consider the resourcing aspects of those scenarios because what we see is there's shortages, prices go up, and this can be very long term and has a, an impact on the recovery process. Logistical problems for builders and construction, we almost always see that because um, there's, it's difficult getting people in and out of um, different communities and getting them to um, organise themselves. 
capability of engineering is always stretched in a disaster. You're always going to see that. So how do we plan that? I think some of the things that Dave said today about do we have the technical leadership within New Zealand to be able to cope with these types of disasters? How do we build up technical capability? Because in any disaster we've looked at, we've always seen this as a problem. And finally, you know, is there a way of building in some holistic approach to recovery that we can start putting in and embedding into our planning processes now that might improve any future disasters? So those were some final ideas for you. Well, thank you very much.